Mohamed Anaya says he's lost nearly a hundred friends and family members in the last year, killed in the conflict in Gaza. They weigh heavily on him, half a world away where the 60-year-old automotive engineer lives in Detroit suburbs. It took me hours to muster the courage to start reading the names. And as painful as it was, each name I read, I wasn't thinking about them. I was thinking of the people who have survived them. And I was, I was measuring my pain and imagining their pain. And it was my pain was immeasurable. And that led me to feel worse about the situation because thinking about their pain. And I was hoping that they would be numb. You need to go through emotions. Mohammed questions whether the US has supplied the weapons used against them. He says America embraced him when he arrived at 17 and that he's built a good life. But he struggles with the contrast between American acceptance and the violence inflicted on his family. Although the US military isn't directly involved in attacks on Gaza, it remains Israel's largest weapons supplier and has provided substantial military aid. He's one of several hundred thousand Arab Americans and Muslims in Michigan, many of whom have family in Gaza or Lebanon. This year, it is also one of a handful of battleground states that will decide the November election. I am so patriotic that I want to I wanna change this country. Anaya says events in Gaza have swayed his vote. He plans to choose Green Party candidate Jill Stein for president in November, rather than Democratic Vice President Kamala Harris or Republican Donald Trump. Polls show Stein garnering just 1% of the vote, but she has seen growing support among Arab Americans and Muslims in battleground states that helped propel Biden to victory in 2020. In Michigan, Trump beat Hillary Clinton in 2016 by 11,000 votes, but lost to Biden in 2020 by 155,000 votes. Political scientists say the 2024 election is too close to call. 37-year-old Hussein Dabaje grew up in Dearborn, a place that has one of the highest percentages of Arab Americans among U.S. cities. He first visited his ancestral home of Lebanon in 2017 and has returned many times since. Two weeks ago today, I lost six family members um, in two different attacks on the same day in Bint Dijbal, which is the village my family is from. Dabaje says Gaza, and now the strikes in Lebanon, is taking its toll on his community. It's... Yeah, it's not easy.